Wonderful. Well, uh, before we come to our talk, because our topic this morning uh, is looking at what happens after uh, a new baby arrives in your life, we took the opportunity earlier this week uh, to interview a couple of new parents in our HT family to hear a bit about the impact of having your first little one born into your family. So let's go to that interview now. Hey guys. Hi. You. Thanks for joining us. Um, obviously we've got you on to, to chat because of the new arrivals. Uh, so we'd love to meet you and uh, hear introductions. Why don't you guys uh, say hello, tell us a bit about yourselves and introduce us to the little ones. Um, hi, I'm Jess and this is Patrick and this is Josephine um, or Josie or Pepper or a million other nicknames that she's acquired um, and she is almost 12 weeks. Amazing. Uh, I'm Vicky and this is Leke and this is little Naomi who is six and a half months old. Wow. Awesome. And, and could you guys tell us a little bit what was it like waiting for the big day? Um, and then when it came, what, what was the big day actually like? Uh, I mean, waiting for it was interesting because I guess you don't, you just don't know what to expect. You know, it could go so many different ways and you're really excited, like meet your little one, find out whether it's a boy or a girl if you, because we decided to have a little surprise and, um, and just to kind of, I don't know, have this little baby who was kind of exciting and I think probably if anything I was slightly naive about how, <laughs> how much it would hurt, <laughs> which was very much, very much indeed. Um, and then yeah, the, the day itself I think was actually very different to what I expected because I was just kind of there a bit spaced out and a bit like, oh my goodness, what just happened? And I think it took me a little while to actually to process it and to kind of really, you know, start to realize and enjoy that you had this little baby. It was more of a shell shock than anything. Mm. But no, it was very nice. Yeah. What about you guys, Jess and Patrick? Well, um, in anticipation, I guess it was like a, a bit of a nervous anticipation. Everyone was asking us about what names we were considering and we didn't want to we didn't want to let anything out because, you know, people will, will have all of their opinions and stuff. I wanted the name Hezekiah, but Jess didn't like that name. Um, but it ended up being a girl anyway. <laughs> On the day of, um, it was loud. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. We'll leave it there as a kind of just uh, fantastic. Well, I mean, one of the things we want to ask you, big question is, how has life changed since? I hear rumours that life doesn't just continue exactly as before. Um, uh, and we just wanted to hear from you. What's like, what's like the last couple of months been like? And um, yeah. Well, the baby interrupts the Zoom calls. <laughs> <laughs> All the time. Yeah, no, it's just, yeah. Didn't realise how kind of all consuming it would be. There are no weekends anymore. <laughs> no evenings um and then obviously with covid we haven't our families are both overseas so we've sort of been on our own and we haven't had our families be able to meet her yet um it's also been amazing to see the support of the church and just our our home group came around with dinners every night for three weeks and um cake deliveries and i know that if if they could they would come and sort of hold her while we you know able to like have a shower and do some errands things like that um but yeah it's been very different but really good as well yeah okay how about you guys i think for us it's yeah it's definitely been a different experience having a, having a baby in lockdown um yeah i you just don't really get the time to to do anything that you might have done previously Hence why I've got so much, so much beard. Um, yeah, it's, I think it's, it's had its ups and downs, but having, having a baby and seeing her smile when you go and pick her up in the morning is just so much, yeah, it's, I just couldn't imagine what that would be like before. 
Um, so yeah, it, it has yeah. been a challenge, but. And morning takes on a very different. <laughs> so what, what do the mornings look like now? Buried. Earlier. Because <laughs> <laughs> the answer I'd give to that. Any particular things that have stuck out as changed or gone or? Uh... I think when we have all our friends say, oh, who wants to go for a drink? At about I know, eight or nine o'clock. And we're just thinking, we're in bed by then. <laughs> yeah, that, that change was very quick as well. It almost felt immediate. So we went from being, oh yeah, really outgoing, fun loving to, to parents who are in bed by nine o'clock almost overnight. So I think that was a really big change for us. How about you? Wow, you're so lucky to be in bed by nine. <laughs> We say it's sleep. We just, <laughs> just waiting until we need to get up. Thanks, guys. Good to be <laughs> here. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see you soon. Bye. 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 This morning's reading is taken from Luke chapter 2, verses 15 to 21. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things in her heart and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that had, they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. And on the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. This is the word of the Lord. So, after Christmas, uh, things often return to normal pretty quickly don't they? Um, I mean, we might hang on to the tree and the decorations uh, for a few days or even a, a few weeks, um, but normally it's not long before the decorations go back in the boxes and up in the loft, before the unwanted presents get quietly returned and those normal routines of work and life just take over. But I don't think that is what it was like at the very first Christmas. Um, as we've been hearing, when a, a new baby arrives, you can't just pack it away after the day. You can't just put it in the loft to bring it out at the end of next year. Um, and uh, normal certainly takes on an entirely new meaning. But that first Christmas, when Jesus arrived, it totally changed Mary and Joseph's life. And uh, Christmas is meant to change our lives too. Jesus is meant to stay involved in our lives. So how do we take Christmas into the rest of our years and rest into the rest of our lives? Um, maybe we can learn a few things from the way that the people at that very first Christmas responded. And uh, so we're going to look at three people and three things we could take into this year. Let's start with Mary, who's just had her firstborn child far from home. What does it mean for her after the main event? Well, we're told in verse 19 of our reading that Mary pondered these things and treasured them in her heart. She treasured them. She doesn't just move on with life. She makes a conscious effort to remember again and again what had happened. Now, I don't know about you that there are lots of things that I have pondered deeply in my life that I now completely um, have forgotten, that I can no longer recall. So GCSE physics would fit into that category. Um, or at one point I, I'd crammed lines and lines of Shakespeare into my head for my exams and even what other people had said about those lines from Shakespeare and absolutely none of that remains. There are lots of things we ponder but we don't hold on to over the long haul. What, there's, a, there's a difference between things we need to know or ought to know and things we really treasure. What would it mean to treasure Christmas, to carry it in our minds throughout the rest of the year in a lasting way? Uh, well, there are a few ways I'm sure that we could do this, but I've got one uh, to suggest to you. 
Becky Pipper, who is an evangelist. Uh, she's spent her life telling people about the good news of Jesus and actually a lot of her time helping Christians tell other people about Jesus. Um, she has this one piece of advice um, that I think would be useful for us. So one of the things that she says in evangelism that can make a big difference is if we preach the gospel to ourselves on a regular basis. She says she preaches the gospel to herself in the car when she's on her way different places or moving her kids around. Sometimes she does it out loud if there's nobody else in the car. She says to herself, Becky, what is the good news? And she says when she does that, she just falls in love with Jesus all over again. Uh, and if you can see her face when she says that, you, could, you can tell that it's true. And I think we can take this idea and apply it to Christmas. I think we could preach Christmas to ourselves throughout the rest of the year. Maybe we could write those sermons for ourselves or we could use the lyrics of Christmas songs. But we could preach it to ourselves. God came himself in person. Our God does not mind a little mess. He's humble. He came himself to save us. He comes that man no more may die. We can preach Christmas to ourselves throughout the rest of the year, treasuring it like Mary did. So Mary treasured the message of Christmas in her heart. And the next group of uh, people we see are the shepherds. And the shepherds praised. The shepherds praised. Once they'd seen the baby Jesus, they couldn't keep their mouths shut. In verse 18, uh, they went about spreading the word, telling everybody about what God had done. And in verse 20, we see that they praised God. Um, they went about uh, worshipping and praising. They were overflowing uh, with prayer and with thankfulness. And of course, we understand this, don't we? When we have good news, we want to share it. And especially the arrival of a new baby uh, we've seen time and time again, can turn the most introverted and quiet couple into instant Instagram and TikTok uh, monsters. Maybe you saw earlier um, this, uh, this year that Rupert Grint, uh, aka Ron from Harry Potter, uh, broke the record, earning himself two million followers on Instagram with his first ever post, uh, which was, of course, of him and his new baby girl. We are invited by the shepherds to be vocal about Christmas and not just to be vocal um, at Christmas, but all year round. By the way, that's your official justification for listening to the Pentatonix Christmas album and singing it at the top of your voice throughout the year. If we think um, that Christmas um, is just for Christmas, then we probably have too sentimental a view of what went on on that life-changing day. The message of Christmas is real and life-changing and it needs to be sung and shouted from the rooftops. We shouldn't be embarrassed of telling people and telling God. Yes, we should treasure it quietly in our hearts for ourselves, but then we're invited by the shepherds to praise, to go about and tell people the good news that our God is not a God who is far off, but one who has come close to tell people that he's knowable and he wants to be known, and to tell people that he's come to seek and to save the lost. And also not to forget to tell God, to bring our praise back to him, to, to, sing, to sing our thanks to him and tell him regularly of how grateful we are for all he's done. Mary treasured and the shepherds praised. And finally, Joseph obeyed. We're told in verse 21 that at the right moment, the baby was named Jesus. But this isn't random. God had said to Joseph in advance, the boy was to be named Jesus and Joseph obeyed. And we know from Matthew that Joseph obeyed in other ways too. After the original dream where Joseph is told to marry Mary and name the boy Jesus, Joseph has three further dreams in which he's told to move the family to different locations. Can you imagine? All the sleepless nights of having a newborn baby and when you finally do get to sleep, it's nothing but angels and new addresses. But Joseph obeyed every time. He moved his life, his work, the pattern of his days around the newborn Jesus. 
When a newborn enters your life, almost everything changes, as we've heard. Your schedule changes, your bills change, your car changes, your social life changes, and that is how it should be. It is perfectly natural and right that your life and your priorities be shaped around a new child. And in just the same way, when Jesus comes into our lives, many, many things change. And that also is perfectly natural and right. It's a joyful thing. It's to be expected and embraced, even if it may be challenging, at points very challenging. What might this mean for us uh, if we're trying to take Christmas into the rest of a year? So here's, here's a, one suggestion for you. One of the new things that parents, uh, new parents acquire um, is a new sense of hearing. They have an ear out all the time for their child. It's like they grow a third ear, especially for their little one. And you and I can learn to keep an ear out for Jesus all the time. We can teach ourselves with the help of his Holy Spirit to have a third ear listening all the time for what he might say to us day by day. It might be that in all the demands on our time and our emotional energy over the course of this year, our attentiveness to Jesus has faded. Let's go into this new year with a renewed determination to keep an ear out for Jesus day by day. So Joseph listened and obeyed. Wonderful. Uh, Well, the message this morning is simply that Christmas isn't meant to stay just for Christmas because we are invited to do the rest of our years with Jesus in our lives. And three things we've looked at that that we can take into this year, we can treasure the message of Christmas as Mary did. Uh, We can tell others about it as the shepherds did. And as uh, Joseph did, we can continue to make space for Jesus in our lives. Thank you for joining us this morning. And we're going to continue now with the time of praying together.